Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on Legends of Tomorrow Season 3, and this is going to be my review for Episode 17, the second last episode of this season, otherwise entitled, a bit of a strange one, guest starring John Noble. But of course, before we get into the rest of the video, there will be spoilers for this episode, and yeah, trust me, uh, there's some big ones. And um, yeah, so if you've not watched the episode, go watch it and then come back to this review later on. But of course, if you are continuing on because you've watched the episode, hopefully, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of this episode. Um, so much happened. I can't believe how much happened in this episode. I felt like I just watched a three hour movie because the episode was split up so much. But yeah, just let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. Of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So the first thing to talk about, Ray's song, about remembering uh, different things going on. I thought that was pretty funny. Like, was it one, 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 Malice has escaped the de de demonic dimension thing that he's in? Whatever it was, it was uh, pretty funny. Now, obviously, this episode continues on basically straight after the end of last one. So the jump ship's gone missing. Everyone's like, what the hell's gone on? And obviously, Amira had taken it, as we saw at the end of last episode, and she's on her way to Zambezi in 1992, it was, to deal with some stuff back then, because 1992 was when her village was destroyed by the warlords. And really, basically, this all continues on, as I was saying from last episode, because we saw Kawasa die. One good thing about Kawasa dying, if you want to say, is that we now have the water totem in our possession. So really, the, the main thing to take from last episode, I guess, was the whole Kawasa dying thing. And, uh, yeah, that's basically pushed Amara over the edge where she's gone back to Zambezi. Now, as we saw in the trailer, we knew that Barack Obama was going to be in this episode and he was going to be taking on Gorilla Grodd. Now, we knew, like, months ago that Obama was going to be in this episode and we thought the episode might be revolved around him, like, there might be an anachronism involving him, but really, he just plays, like, a small part, it's like an intro thing to the episode and then he shows up again, which was okay, but... The trailer was a bit misleading for this episode, but at least it didn't spoil it because a lot of stuff happened in this episode, which I guess they couldn't reveal in the trailer, which I think was a smart move to maybe just make people think that Obama was like the main part of the episode. And I did like when Obama was there, we got, uh, uh, was it Ray? I think it was Ray saying, run, Barry, run, because Barack Obama, Barack, Barry, you know, the Flash. I thought it was nice. Now, I'm very happy that this wasn't what we, the only bit of malice that we saw in this episode, but it was really cool seeing like Nora there and just getting like over, over, like overcome by malice and seeing that shadow come up on, like come up above Damien, just seeing like the fear in Damien's eyes. That was a really great scene and thank the Lord, thank you, the anti-malice that, um, that wasn't all we saw, but we'll get to what we saw later on in the video, but, uh, that was a really cool moment. I think the best parts of this episode were the ones between Nora and Damien. They were definitely the best parts of the episode. And I think Wally had a really good episode as well. But we'll get to some Wally stuff later on. But essentially, as I was saying, the best parts of this episode were, were Nora and Damien. And just basically Damien seeing what Nora becomes pushes him to the point of approaching the Legends. And we did see through some promo images that he would be on the Wave Rider. And essentially he brings the water totem as a bargaining chip saying like, Hey, here's another totem, put in your collection. You've got all the Pokemon gym badges now. Do what you want to do with that. Take on the Elite Four. Is it the Elite Four? I think it's the Elite Four. Um, at whatever it's called. Um, so essentially he does that. But the Legends aren't the most trustworthy of him. Or they're not trust uh, trusting him as, uh, you know, as he would want to be trusted. Uh, but that's understandable. Now, one uh, cool thing that they did in this episode was, as we know, uh, Amaya was going back to 1992 to deal with all of that stuff in Zambezi. But instead of old man Logan, we get old woman Amaya. So the makeup was pretty good. It actually didn't look too much like uh, Maisie Richardson Seller. I think that's the actress that plays Amaya. They actually did a really good job with the makeup to make her look much older, uh, which was nice to see. Uh, obviously, we've only really seen one example of that, I think, for the most part. And that was when we saw... Old Man Oliver Queen back in season one. But this is where really where Wally stood up and I think was a really good part of the episode. Just dealing with Nate and Amaya trying to change this past. Obviously towards the end, it just the plan goes out the window because of what needs to happen to deal with Malice. But you know, Wally was very smart in the situation, basically saying, look, we've dealt with this. We knew what Barry did when he ran back in time, calls Flashpoint, don't cause the Zambezi Flashpoint. Just don't cause that. So I thought Wally was really good in this episode. The only real down part with Wally it's because I'm not going to mention it later in the video, was in the end fire when he just gets knocked down. There's like, a, I knew going into this when Wally came into Legends, they would always find a way to like take him out of fight so he's not overpowered. And that was an example of it. So that's just the down part for Wally in this episode. But for the rest of it, he was really good. He's probably my favorite character, like an individual character. Wally was definitely my favorite character of the episode. 
One point I thought was funny, as I was saying, like Barack Obama was there, was in there for a short amount of time dealing with Grodd, but I did like it how Sarah went back to him for advice. I just thought that was funny and how he was just like bringing up all this terminology that was used this season. I thought it was a funny moment, but I think it was just done for a bit of a gag. But um, yeah, and also Sarah misses Obama, which um, yeah, I can see why. And like, as I was saying, there's so much stuff went down this episode. I feel like I've watched three episodes, but we do see uh, Ray go to New Zealand in 1999 to the set of Lord of the Rings to talk to John Noble as Mick had been watching the, was he reading? Cause I don't know if he just specifically said he was watching the movies. He just said he was um, enjoying Lord of the Rings. Um, so when I think Zari had a go at him about reading a book, he like scoffed at her. So I don't know if he was reading the books and then went on to the movies, but anyway, he was watching Lord of the Rings and he sees, uh, I think it's Denethor. I think that's a character that um, John Noble played. Anyway, so they hear his voice and go, hey, that sounds a lot like Malice. Which is funny because John Noble actually does voice Malice on the show. So that's like a little tongue-in-cheek gag for this episode, which I thought was nice. Um, for those wondering why he was speaking differently, um, like he's actually an Australian actor. Like he was speaking differently, like he was speaking his normal voice when he was speaking to Ray. That's because John Noble is Australian. So he wasn't just putting on like a fake accent to seem different. He was literally playing himself. John Noble was playing John Noble. John Noble wasn't playing an Americanized version of John Noble. He was playing John Noble. So that's why there was the, the Australian accent there. And um, yeah, that was a very nice, fun cameo that the show did very well. But essentially they used John Noble's voice to get into Nora's head through, you know, Ray being the Adam and stuff like that, which I thought was a really great idea. And just Legends does so like silly things, but it makes them work. They're, they're so wacky. Like that whole scene was just wacky and a bit out there, but... Legends makes it work. I don't know how they manage to do this. I say it all the time. There's all these weird things that Legends does, but they make them work. If The Flash did it, stupid. If Arrow did it, what the hell? If Supergirl did it, huh? What the hell? Legends goes, hey, that works. That's actually really impressive. How they do it, it blows my mind. That's why I want multiverse stuff to come in next season, but we'll talk about that at a later date. Um, but yeah, that was a great moment. Now, one scene I was looking forward to in this episode, and if you watched my trailer breakdown, you would have known this. I was looking forward to like the confrontation between Ava and Rip about what had happened last episode with the whole Ava being uh, a clone sort of thing. I was wondering what's going to happen there. They're going to have a confrontation and stuff like that. And we got that. So yeah, Rip was like, okay, you know, I'm a clone and stuff like that. And then it's revealed that Ava wasn't actually the first one. There was more than one Ava that Rip had dealt with. The Ava we currently have on the show is the number 12 or the, the 12th clone that Ripper's used, which like, that's insane. Like you wouldn't want to be Ava at that point. Um, but her and Sarah do have like a, a sort of like a nice conversation that doesn't end, I wouldn't say like extremely well. Um, but yeah, that's a massive revelation. Like, you know, maybe like a third or fourth, but a 12th, like that's pretty extreme. Um, but we'll have to wait and see where that goes in later or in the finale, I guess. Uh, there might be a confrontation between Rip and Sarah then. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, not Rip and Sarah. Sorry, Rip and Ava. It wouldn't surprise me if Ava died, maybe. Um, hopefully not, but that might be the thing that they're coming down to. Or maybe Rip dies, one of the two. Now, we're led to believe that Amaya wiped her memory to just forget about Nate and just to focus on Zambezi. It's hard to tell because later on, like, it's as if she, like, remembers what's going on. So, did she was she just lying to Nate? That was, like, a bit of a question mark I had on that, uh part of the episode. Um, I don't know if next episode is going to start off in Zambezi and then we continue on into the rest of the finale. Uh, but that bit confused me a bit. If anyone wants to clarify, maybe I just wasn't focusing too much, but was she just lying to Nate earlier on the episode, just pretending that she didn't know who he was or had she actually just wiped her memory and th and later in the episode, she just like called her, call him Nathaniel and talked about the totems and stuff like that. It's a bit, a bit confusing. I don't know, maybe I'm just like looking too deep into it or maybe I missed a certain part of the episode. Let me know in the comments. Now, a big twist in the episode, really, if you look at the, the trailer, it's not a twist because there's a shot of it in the trailer, but I completely forgot about that part in the trailer going into this episode. I was just focused on what was going on because there was so much going down. But it was, I found it a massive twist when like uh, Grodd attacked Zambezi. I just completely forgot about Grodd. Damien actually attacking God because he wants to fix Nora. I don't think Damien was really thinking too much, but I think that's a whole like fatherly thing. Like when your child is in danger, you just sort of focus on that and forget about the other things around you. So you can understand that. But it, I found it a bit of a twist when God came in and then we had the fight between uh, Essie or Essa and um, I think that's the daughter's name and Grodd. And then we had Amaya coming in, an old woman Amaya getting absolutely slammed. Surprised he didn't die. Like you think a swing from 
Gorilla Grodd would do some damage, especially to an elderly lady, an elderly lady, sorry, without the totem. Anyway, but then we see Nate actually use the Earth totem, which was really cool. Ray has the Water totem, he tries to use it against um, Damien, but unfortunately, he hasn't done it. So I, I'm guessing we're going to get a big moment at the end, or at some point in the finale, where Ray uses the Water totem. That's like really the first time we've seen the Earth totem properly used. It was pretty cool, I guess. Um, I'm surprised he managed to fling Grodd that far away. I thought that was a bit unbelievable, because it just looked like the ground was going like... Say if that's the ground. It looked like it was only going like maybe that much higher. Didn't like it was that big, but anyway. But the thing I was waiting for in this episode, and I was like, are we going to get it before we get into the finale? Because I wasn't surprised that they've left it now to re reveal Malice, because it's a big CGI character. They cost a lot to do. Leave it to like one or two episodes. So I was like, can we please see him at least once before going to the finale, finale? Like he's full form. And we see it. And I think he looks awesome. I think like, he looks really cool. He literally looks like a demon, but like a demon on steroids. And really, that's what you want for your big bad. It couldn't just be a normal demon, even though a normal demon would be pretty out there. We need that demonic steroid head off his chains demon malice. We needed that. And I thought he looked pretty cool. I think, or pretty good and pretty cool and pretty awesome. I think the CGI looks pretty good, uh, if not top notch, because you got to remember in daytime, CGI doesn't look that good. So... Hopefully there's a bit more darker scenes where he's there because I think that will really uh, highlight how cool he does look. Uh, but I'm impressed with it. I'm happy. I was, I'm was. i a bit disappointed in the same time because I wanted to see him earlier. But as long as we're seeing him before the finale, I didn't want to be like, oh, he's in two seconds of the finale and that's it. It's like some final fight. He's going to be in the finale like that, you'd think, for the most part. I don't think we're going to see Nora again unless it's like something through the death totem, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I thought it looked cool. I know some people might have issues with it, but for Legends... Considering Grodd looked pretty bad in this episode, CGI-wise, like his movements and stuff, I thought Malice looked really cool. His wings just looks like a mad demon. And, um, yeah, I'm impressed. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I think it was a solid episode leading into the finale. I guess some of the Barack Obama stuff was a bit weird in regards to continuity and stuff like that. Um, and really, maybe, like, Wally getting knocked out. But for the rest of it, I pretty much enjoyed it. Like, some of the Nate and Amaya stuff I thought was a bit weird. I'm still confused whether Amaya actually had wiped her memory or not, or if it was just her messing around. They didn't really fully explain that, I don't think. But I thoroughly enjoyed this episode, and I cannot wait for the finale. I've loved this season of Legends. There's only been one episode which I thought was average to, like, below average, which was, which was actually the mid-season finale. So hopefully the finale isn't like that, but I don't think it will. I'm really looking forward to it. Constantine's in next episode. Jonah Hex is in next episode. Um... Uh... Uh, what's, uh, Jax is the next episode, I was going to call him Franz, because that's the actor's name, but Jax is in the next episode, aka one part of the former Firestorm, he's in next episode, what the hell, what the hell is going on with Legends in this finale, I cannot wait, this episode felt like it was three episodes in one, so hopefully next episode is just like one big short movie, I cannot wait, and hopefully you guys can't wait either. But thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it show your support, show your support for Legends by leaving a like, and if you're hyped for the finale next week, of course, if you, uh, you want to leave what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below, be sure to do that. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.